Hello guys, I'm so excited that finally I have just received my new book, The Bible of Bodybuilding. It's a book that consists of 400 pages. You can purchase this book on Amazon, and this book contains my format of books, the PDs using sports and the good, the bad, and the ugly, plus the training to use supplementation, but also including extra features, Q&As about gear, about HRT, but also a quiz regarding supplements, and diet, and of course, PDs. So the Bible of Bodybuilding on Amazon, both on ebook and uh, Kindle version. Hey everybody, welcome to Ask Dr. Testosterone, starring Dr. George Julianos, and brought to you by his new book, The Bible of Bodybuilding. Everything you need to know in there to build a great physique, training, nutrition, supplementation, PEDs, put it all together and build the best physique possible. And while you're on Amazon.com getting that, might as well get Real Bodybuilding by Ron Harris, another awesome book. And now please welcome from Athens, Greece, Dr. George Suliados. Good, good afternoon, doctor, for you. It's afternoon over there. What is going on? Not too much. So uh, your diet, uh, you're going to you're gonna keep this condition, this body weight for a while now, I guess, right? Yeah, listen, it's getting, it's getting tougher now to drop in weight. I mean, my light was 204. Now I'm 205 or 206. You know, I'm about 8% with the caliper in, in seven spots. Uh, and uh, in order to, to drop more, I, I have to keep lowering my calories. The point is, this is a critical period with, uh, with winter, with the pandemic. You know, if you lower your body fat low, you're vulnerable to infections, you know? Mm. So I'm getting also tired, you know, and my... My recovery is jeopardized when I don't eat more calories or carbs. Mm -hmm. So I, I'll keep it steady. And by the way, uh, we are not yet informed if the education will take place, you know. Well, the Arnold education thing. Huh? Uh, now, it, when, if the Arnold education will be on by beginning of March, you know. Yeah. I believe then I'll take the plane to LA to meet uh, Per Bernal, but... Uh, to have the photo shooting in such case i'll start that in again perhaps from uh, uh february 1st you know for for four weeks but i guess this uh fitty flicks um uh, um platform that he's uh, been doing it's online and i guess it will be easy anyway and another thing is that in the back of my head i have for for me the nationals you know the masters will be easy for me i guess because I don't believe I'm more than four weeks out. Right. Okay. So I need to go to 195. I'm 205. I guess it will be a slow period. Perhaps I'll start dieting again from April 1st, you know, or March 1st, you know, who knows? When is, when is, uh, when is, when is that contest? What, what month? Uh, it's by the mid of May, end of May, you know. So I'm not going to change anything to my replacement therapy, you know. And I'll push it to the max with the diet. Perhaps I'm going to lose some muscle, but I think I look decent for a master, even though I'll be a senior master, you know, almost 49. Mm. I have good skin. I have good face. So uh, I have maturity in my body. You know, I don't look that lousy for uh, <laughs> a late 40s. You know, the only thing is I really, as we age, the skin to the side chest becomes more loose, you know, even though mm. I'm taking G8s, I'm, taking all the collagen protein and stuff, yeah. you know? So uh, I don't know, I assume perhaps there is a little bit of fat more, okay. But uh, there's not so tight the skin as in my uh, um, 20s or my 30s when I was either off season, it was not that piece yeah. of, uh, you know. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, we call it a love handle. We call it a little love handle or a muffin top. Yeah. Hmm. But, uh, you know, there's a good sign about the Arnold Education Seminar because I saw a post from the Arnold Sports over the weekend that the Arnold Amateur is going to happen. Yes. So, that, so if they're going to let all those athletes from all over the world fly to Columbus. Yes, Sean Ray said it. Yeah. Sean Ray I posted in his Instagram about it. Okay. Yeah. And this is something, yeah, because I was in 2016 in the Arnold, in Arnold Amateur because I followed two athletes. Oh. So you believe that this is tied with the educational? Well, I mean, if they're going to have that, I think they're going to have everything. Because that's probably the most difficult thing to have as part of the contest, because it's 
it's sometimes there's over a thousand athletes that come for the Arnold. Yes, yes, yes. Big, you know, from Middle East also, you know. Big show, big show, yeah. So if that that's to me, that's a good sign that everything's gonna it's be it's something that happened also in two, two 2020, you know. Yeah, we didn't have it in 2020. We didn't have we it. We had it, we had it. Yeah, it, don't you remember this? Yeah, who are the pro card, this that's, Italian guy, this beast. But there was no there was no audience, that's all. You're right, you're right. Yes. Yeah. Oh, 2020, nothing was stopped yet except the expo. Yes. Just the expo yes. didn't happen. Right, yes. Right. I'm getting get this COVID world, man. I'm, I'm losing track of time badly. So it's the first time we're going to have an expo since 2019, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's been, it's been a crazy couple of years. All right, Doc, let's let's get some questions. Uh, I wanted to lead with Gus Poulos because he's uh, the most consistent poster of questions on the, the comment section. And he always has good questions. And I think this is a good one from Gus Poulos. Doctor, can you explain? Can you please explain why some studies I've read about Trenbolone show an elevation in ALT levels in the liver? I was under the impression that Tren, being a 19 nor, bypasses the liver and goes directly into the blood. No, I, I never heard of this. So either Deca or Tren bypass the liver because they are not 19 nor testosterone derivatives. This the fact that they are not 17 alkylated means that the, the stress liver in a lesser degree related to those agents you know hmm. um by the way one of the two liver enzymes reflects more to the skeletal muscle tissue rather than to the liver enzymes uh, by as a pharmaceutical hepatitis okay hmm. um it's also there was also um an article of bill welling in muscular development two years ago or three maybe who said is tremble on liver toxin the answer is it depends on the dose and hmm. the duration so and it depends how, how many mLs you use it, how long you how prolonged you, you use this material, you know. So everything can become dangerous, even anavar, if you stack too many doses for long, you know. Hmm. What about your what about your kidneys? Tremblone does tremble. Yeah, uh, yeah, this is the this is the the most uh, critical thing because it elevates the blood pressure, the kidneys get then the filter becomes you know hardened from the blood pressure along with stimulus if you take. So one of my patients uh, was a world champion of amateur, you know, he was very close to the pro card. Mm -hmm. um, he was taking tremble all year round. He was lean, he was mean. And uh, he was, uh, his coach said, it's okay, you have 1.7 creatinine, it's okay, you can live with that. Yeah, okay. Now he has four creatinine, He's in stage two of kidney failure. Oh my God. And at the age of four or three, he tries to minimize this decline because eventually one day he'll go either to dialysis or to liver transplant, to, to kidney transplant, you know? Wow. Is this coach still coaching people? Um, unofficially, yes. Yes. Wow. Okay. I mean, just another, just another reason, guys, to not put your faith in these coaches for what you know should be medical type Actually, advice. <clears throat> this, this was a coach of a, of a Greek pro, you know well, oh. and uh, this coach has blocked me on Facebook for ten years. Oh God! <laughs> because one of his, one of his clients passed away, you know, and before passing away, I uh, had the I dared to, to send him a message about the kidney failure and, and steroids back when I was writing for Bill Welling, you know, yeah. and he took this as an insult, <laughs> you know, crazy stuff. Wow. So I, I just wanted was to lighten up, you know, and, and help, you know, right, but, yeah. but they took it offensive, you know, because they're, they're insecure. And when this uh, world champion now to, uh, uh, told him, should I ask Do uh, Dr. T? He said, what am I supposed to look? Uh, when you ask uh, Dr. T, you know, but I tell them, you know, everybody has his own business, you know, yeah. I'm not playing the coach, I'm playing the doctor. I, I, I am, I'm supposed to be a doctor, okay? Yeah. So you're not supposed to know everything. Right. Okay, yeah. you cannot play the expert on the medical field, you know, this is a felony, this is something dangerous. And another patient of, he, uh, another client of his, so when he came to my office, he said, we were in Arnold Classic in Spain, we had taken some diuretic, I fainted, and he was searching on Google how to treat this shit, you know? This is crazy, instead of going to the ER, okay? Wow, yeah, because he was afraid he would get in trouble? For, of course. Know, wow. So stay the hell out of it and ask for medical help, okay? Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know this coach, but all that sounds terrible, terrible. <laughs> That's literally putting your client's life in jeopardy. Dude, that guy could have died, that guy backstage. That's terrible. Uh, let's turn to another subject. Uh, we've been getting a lot of SSRI questions over the past couple of weeks since we had that first one. So this is, is use of SSRIs like Paxil contraindicated when taking Nandrolone because both could elevate prolactin levels? Should one stop taking SSRIs when taking Nandrolone, a.k.a. DECA? Oh, I said, we don't know sure if uh, Nandrolone will elevate prolactin. It's multifactorial. No, I was taking uh, Nandrolone 50 milligrams, but my prolactin was below 10, for instance. Now, if you're stressed out, if you're using opiates, if you're smoking marijuana, if you have hypothyroidism, then prolactin may elevate. So work all, always by evidence, okay? Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I never heard that before, but uh, Paxil would not be the only one that, that I would be concerned. There's a lot of similar antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications out there, I'm guessing. Actually, elevated prolactin are, is, is, is um, beneficial for those who have prim primitive ejaculation, you know? Oh, okay. And they give SSRIs to those people that are stressed out and panic that come very easily, like hmm. roosters. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it could go the other way, and then you will have that inorgasmia that we've talked about before. An orgasmia is better, believe me. A girl will won't leave you for an orgasmia. She will leave you for being a rooster, you know? Yeah, but then you don't get to finish. Screw that. My, listen, a relationship is based all, all this on the woman. So let the woman God. finish ten times. Yes. <laughs> okay, God. she will fall in love with you. Okay, well, I, I, we need to finish too. Anyway, that's, I'm just advocating for the men out there. Here we go with another cycle question. I started testosterone cypionate 250 milligrams five weeks ago. I'm 41. Should I stop? I only wanted to feel better and gain a little muscle. Well, do you feel better? Did you gain any? He didn't. We don't know. You should do a PCT now, you know, or check out your levels if you really need the testosterone 41. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, I just saw a post from a young guy I know. He's only, he can't be more than 27, 28. And he decided to, he only went on drugs maybe a, not even two years ago. And now he's decided he's going to go on TRT. Uh, he's been on TRT. And I'm thinking, do you even need TRT? Because I bet his levels would have came back and he wouldn't need TRT. You know, TRT has become such a misused term. It's, it's a legitimate TRT is for people that cannot produce enough testosterone anymore. Uh, and it's only but bodybuilders take it as a, as a cruising. Yeah. I mean, or, you know. 500 milligrams is a cruise. <laughs> Not only that. Okay. Let's come off from steroids. Oh, I'll feel awful. Let's use TRT. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's not like that. It's not like a, how you call it? A bridge. Yeah. That's what... cycle, you know? Well, they, you know, it's PCT and TRT have become like almost the same thing to a lot of people. No, yeah. PCT is to restart your own production. Yeah. Well, why bother? I just keep taking more tests. Oh, good Lord. Okay, here we have, a, we're going to finish off with a, a question for a woman from, from the uh, husband. Dear doctor, blood work from my wife shows low thyroid function. She's not into fitness or bodybuilding. She just struggles to get the weight off. She doesn't take any medications or drugs. Doctors here in Belgium won't prescribe her thyroid medication because her levels are in range. TSH uh, 0 0.67 MU over L range. And I guess the the normal range is 0.26 to 420. So she is well within the range. And free T4, 15.9, where the range is 12 to 22. What do you think of those numbers? Should she be on thyroid medication? It's not possible here to check T3 levels because the other markers are in range. She lives a healthy lifestyle and the other markers of her blood work are fine. Well, actually she's over producing thyroid hormones because TSH is close to zero. So mm -hmm. it's the opposite. This guy is confused. So if you have so low TSH 0.6 and the lowest rate 0.2, now the lowest the TSH means that the higher the activity of the gland, okay? Mm -hmm. It's the opposite of the axis. So if TSH goes up to 4.5 to 5, then obviously something is going wrong. Mm -hmm. Also T4 is, the, is, uh, is within range. Now, I don't believe she needs anything. Now, the reason maybe she struggles to to lose weight could be insulin resistance. Mm. Okay. And of course, uh, if she has, um, uh, if, so if she's diabetic, 
All right, and of course, it's a matter of uh, physical activity, calories in, calories out, how's your diet? Yeah. But certainly from the metabolic rate, there's nothing wrong with the thyroid uh, gland, at least from TSH. Now, I don't know if the antibodies are elevated, she has some Hashimoto disease hmm. and some thyroiditis. We need to, to see further evaluation of the assessment of, the, of that. I guess, uh, check it out, your A1C, your glycerin hemoglobin, and of course, how's the diet? How's the physical activity? Okay, because we need to burn more calories than the one that we ingest. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there, there could be a lot of other factors going on, you're right. So of course. I, I think a lot of people are quick to, to jump onto thyroid medication. Yeah, it's the excuse, you know. Yeah, I have low thyroid, but that that blood work shows it's, there's no medical need for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, there's a lot of other options to explore. Sir. But I'm always saying, uh, bullying somebody who's obese uh, it's something superficial because they may, they may be underlying diseases like diabetes, mm -hmm. hypothyroidism, hypogonadism also, but also a Cushing disease. So before we judge superficially and shallowly somebody who's fat, mm -hmm. we have to think if this, if this somebody struggles, of course, with medical issues. Of course, there could be the, the obvious that he overeats and he, he stays in the couch, you know? She, yeah, I mean, it says a healthy lifestyle, but there was no... We don't know how much she trains or exercises. Maybe she just needs to do a lot more cardio, throw in some more weight training. We don't know anything about her fitness regimen and her diet. So until- you No, know, many people go to the gyms, bust themselves, and then they want to uh, reward themselves and they go to, to the fast food. You know, this is yeah, wrong. For I know, I know. <laughs> That's how they reward themselves for all that working out, but yeah. They have a milkshake over here and have the, <laughs> the burger and say, I just have one hour workout. Yeah, pizza. Well, was it a Planet Fitness? That horrible workout chain in the U.S. They have pizza night, and they actually give out pizza for the members. Yeah, terrible. That's why they're not really a gym. But anyway, well, doctor, that is all the questions. I want to make sure everyone goes to your website, gtoul.com. You can find all kinds of articles in English and Greek. Plenty of awesome information. You can pick up that book, the Bible of Bodybuilding, there as well as Amazon.com, and uh, follow the doctor on Instagram. He's been dieting quite a while. We got workout tips meals, all that good stuff, at Dr. George Suliados. And that's it. We appreciate having you here, doctor. Only only way a lot of these people ever have any chance to ask. 104 episodes, yeah. Is this 140 or one? I got 141. Just another 10 for 150. <laughs> yeah, we get it. I think you get a mug after that or a t-shirt, something. <laughs> so guys, <laughs> if you have questions for the next show, please leave them in the comments below. We'll get to the most interesting ones. And if, as long as they're not this long, don't make them that long. We don't like that. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, do the thumbs up, hit the notification bell so you know when we have new videos, all that good stuff. We appreciate you guys watching. Ask Dr. Testosterone with Dr. George Chuliados. We'll see you next time. Mm.